Hello fellow controllers and online pilots. I am Meg Chester and thank you very much for visiting my channel. This is the first of a series of short educational videos aiming to improve your controlling on VATSIM as well as your understanding of how air traffic controllers work and what they have to consider making their decisions. Today we are going to talk about a topic that is often overlooked, speed control for on-route merging conflicts. We will begin with a rather easy problem that I staged on Sweatbox, a simulator for the simulator, if you so will. Later we'll have a look at the rather interesting situation that I encountered in one of my last streams. So just uh, let's get to it and let us begin. This is the sector that we are working tonight, uh, the light gray area that's uh, the ACC or Center on Vatsim of uh, Austria, call sign Wien Radar. We have two aircraft in this equation. Uh, we have Austrian 134 and Airbus A321 in Praha airspace at throttle 350, and we have uh, Eurowings 5807 and Airbus A319 uh, in uh, German airspace, uh, currently on the frequency of Munich, in front of 321 and uh, is announced at front of 350. So um, the matter of the fact is that both aircraft. Uh, intent and will be flying at uh, front of 350 when they cross my sector border and uh, as we will see a little bit later on uh, both aircraft are flying uh, direct or more or less direct to waypoint Sazal. Sazal is an exit waypoint in the southeast of uh, our sector. So um, what is what do we have to consider now? We have both aircraft at throttle 350. We have both aircraft later on merging over the same waypoint, and we have two aircraft of similar performance. These are the things that uh, we have to to uh, keep in mind when uh, analyzing the situation and when uh, looking for a solution on how to uh, bring both aircraft to the downstream sector to the next sector without a conflict and uh, primarily looking for best efficiency also for the pilots because uh, air traffic control is mainly about the safe uh, efficient and orderly flow of traffic so you see safety is always first but uh, the efficiency is is uh, of course a very high priority for air traffic control so let's uh, hop right into the situation that arises if no action is going to be taken uh, that is going to look like this both aircraft are going to leave my sector at flight 350 with uh, a very small margin in separation so we have 1.8 miles between the two aircraft and that's not going to be enough um, normally within a sector in the ACC area in Wien uh, at least five nautical miles uh, are required at the same flight level with the uh, transfer to the downstream sector we require at least uh, seven nautical miles uh, and the mileage has to increase um, for the same speed we would need at least 10 nautical miles of uh, separation so let's have a look at uh, the uh, time lapse how this uh, situation turns out if no action is going to be taken Here we are now at the sector. Uh, the light gray area is the sector that I'm covering tonight for this simulation. We have the two aforementioned aircraft, Austrian 134 and Airbus A321, at flight level 350 with a speed of 450 knots. We have the Eurowings 5807 and Airbus A319 at flight level 350 with a speed of 450 knots. So as you can see, both aircraft are pretty much the same uh, class in terms of performance. And I've already set up a QDM, I'll show you how this works, um, in, in order to determine whether or not these aircraft are going to pose a uh, the risk of a conflict when they leave the sector. So the Austrian 134 is flying via Budex and Sazal, and uh, yeah, uh, my uh, great top sky tool is now showing me that uh, there is a risk of, of uh, traffic at Sazal already. So. Um, the, my Top Sky plugin already shows me this, uh, but in any way, even if you don't use Top Sky, you can uh, very easily determine whether or not uh, two aircraft are going to be in conflict once they leave the sector, and uh, this is uh, this is why the time. So uh, the Austrian 134 is going to overfly Sazal at time 39, and if we have a look at the Eurowings 5807, uh, it's also at time uh, scheduled to cross Sazal at time 39. So one minute or uh, 
within uh, one minute, that is not enough uh, time uh, to achieve a separation of uh, seven miles or greater. And this is what we're trying to achieve today, um, a separation of seven miles or greater. At this time, I'm using my QDMs here. I will uh, look at the slant distance. Mind you, that slant distance, it does not uh, account for any turns that the aircraft is going to do in the future. So at slant distance wise, the Austrian 134 is three miles ahead of the uh, Eurowings 5807 so um, but he's still flying a little bit of a turn overhead Budex. I will assume now that uh, the Austin 134 has already called in and I have uh, to make a decision now which of those two aircraft is going to be number one and which one is going to be number two um, with the Austin 134 being three miles ahead three miles doesn't look like a lot but three miles is uh, just just almost half of what we need to achieve once the aircraft is uh, overflying Sazal. So the Austrian 134 is going to be number one and uh, to ignore the turn in the future so that uh, the the values that I'm ga uh, getting displayed represent the actual values that the aircraft will fly over those waypoints, I will send the aircraft uh, direct to the waypoint so that uh, I actually do have the slant distance uh, for my calculations. So um, after Austrian 134 uh, calls in, I would have to send him direct to uh, Sazal waypoint, and also I would have to give him a speed. It's an Airbus A321, so normally a speed of Mach point uh, seven nine should be sufficient. That's uh, rather high speed uh, for airlines that flying with a low cost index. Uh, we even can go as high as eight zero, I would say. Um, that's uh, as long as there is uh, no turbulence report in the area. That should be far uh, enough from the barber pole for the aircraft uh, to be in a, in a safe uh, regime in terms of speed so um, like I said we're going to uh, identify the aircraft with radar contact and then we're gonna send the aircraft direct to Sazal and instruct him with the speed I will just do this via the label because those are similar to aircraft there's uh, no actual pilot behind the wheel on those two aircraft um, so I can just enter those values in here and the the aircraft in the simulator will fly it in the meantime I will also assume the Eurowings 5807 um, and we'll talk about what I'm going to do with him uh, in just a second so uh, I will just unpause the simulation and uh, Austin 134 radar contact fly speed Mac correction fly Mac point seven nine or greater proceed direct to Zazar and this is exactly what, hap what what's happening now. The aircraft is now going to fly direct to Sansal. He's going to make a, a small correction to the right, as he just did just here. And uh, he is now increasing the speed, Mach 0.79. And we have a ground speed of 455 knots. So he's five knots faster than he was before. Um, the next thing that uh, is going to happen is that the Eurowings 5807 is calling in. And I will identify him. Eurowings 5807, Wien Radar, Servus, Radar Contact. And what I do know now is that um, I'm going to need to reduce the Eurowings 5807 because I decided for myself that Austrian 134 is going to be number one. Um, but one of the things that uh, many people struggle with is uh, to, to, to determine how much I have to reduce the Eurowings 5807. And there are several rules of thumb here um, that, that we can use for. Um, I will make a several, separate video on the rules of thumb in regard to speed, but uh, for, we can just assume as of now that um, 0 0.1, correction, 0 0.01 of Mach in different, uh, difference in Mach equals a ground speed difference of approximately six knots. So what we are, what we have to determine now is what difference in knots, uh, correction, in, in, yeah, in knots do I need to have for those, those two aircraft to have seven nautical miles at least over Sasa. So they have they are now planned with the uh, with a difference of uh, four nautical miles already. So I need to achieve uh, only merely three nautical miles in order to have my seven nautical miles. I will go to the safe side and I will just uh, say I will go for seven additional nautical miles. So from, from this point on, I want to have a difference of seven nautical miles uh, between those aircraft. So I want this to increase to a difference of uh, 10 miles in total. And uh, how do I calculate that? 
uh, it's rather easy because, um, as you know, uh, a knot equals one nautical mile in one hour. So um, if I want to have uh, seven nautical miles in one hour, I need a speed, dif dif speed difference of seven knots. So we don't have one hour in time. We only have 20 minutes, as uh, indicated by the QDMs here. So uh, 20 minutes is only one third of an hour. So I can just multiply the seven by three and that uh, equals about 21 and I know my speed difference that I need to achieve and in order to have a uh, 21 knot speed difference uh, when we say 0 0.01 Mach equals approximately 6 knots in ground speed I need to have a delta so a difference between Mach numbers of those two aircraft of let's say uh, let's divide it by 6 um, of 0 0.04 so what i'm going to do now is i will reduce the eurowings 5807 to mach 0.75 which uh, is 0 0.04 mach less than the austrian 134 and we will just uh, fast forward then and looks how this pans out so i will uh, resume the simulation reduce the eurowings 5807 to mach 0.75 I will just uh, verify that he's actually doing that. Yes, he's doing this. So we will have, we will see that the ground speed should be now decreasing. So we have now a speed difference. So we have 433 knots now on the Eurowings, 455 on the Austrian 134. So we have a speed difference of uh, 22 knots, which is uh, ballpark numbers, uh, exactly what we need. And uh, in order to monitor the progress of the of the uh, actual separation of those two aircraft, I will now engage the so-called SEP tool, the separation tool, which indicates the minimum distance between two aircraft, considering the current track and the current ground speed. It does not account for any turns. Therefore, once the Eurowings 5 hits here, Seven turns left at Lamsey, uh, we will see that those two uh, blue uh, speed vector indications or uh, general vectors um, will uh, reduce in distance. At this time, we have a minimum distance of 28 miles, which will be in uh, 27 minutes. Um, we will probably have then those seven miles in minimum distance once the Eurowings 5807 is turning left to uh, Sazal. I will just accelerate this a little bit more now, 16 times once again. We still have a uh, speed difference of 22 knots. Yeah, and now look at that. We have a minimum distance of 11 miles, which was to be expected because uh, we already had a difference of three miles because Austrian 134 was in front. We added, uh, for safety measures, uh, approximately seven miles uh, additional to those three miles. So we have now uh, 10 miles, 10, 11 miles that those two aircraft will be separated once they cross the border. I will now fast forward once again in order to show you how this all works out once they cross uh, Sazal and once we send those two aircraft over to the next sector. So as you can see, as by the prediction of the SEP tool, we have a minimum distance of approximately 11 miles now. And once those two aircraft overfly Sazal, they will proceed direct to Barbit in trail of uh, each other. I have two options now. When I send the aircraft over to the next sector, to Budapest, I can either uh, have those aircraft fly the speed that uh, has been instructed, in this case, uh, 7975, uh, which the controller in Budapest will see in the label and he can act accordingly. Or um, because those two aircraft are very well separated, they have more than 10 miles. So as long as I make sure that the uh, succeeding traffic is not flying uh, faster than the, uh, the succeeding traffic is not flying faster than the preceding traffic, I can uh, just loosen up on the speed restrictions a little bit. So I can uh, tell Austrian 134, for example, fly now Mach 0.79 or greater. I can tell Eurowings 5807 fly Mach 0.79 or less.
In this case, the worst thing that could happen is that they are flying both the same speed and uh, the uh, separation of 11 or the commands should be assured uh, for the next few sectors at least. Um, yeah, at some point, one of the aircraft is m most likely to climb or descend uh, for whatever reason, maybe because of uh, performance reasons, then uh, all those have has to be recalculated. But as long as they're flying the same level with this uh, speed instructions, Mach 0.79 or greater, Mach 0.79 or less, that should be fine. How does this translate now to working on VATSIM? Uh, this is a screenshot from one of my latest streams where I was controlling the south sector over Austria. And uh, as you can see, there's just normal VATSIM traffic all around. It was not very busy at this time. So I had uh, quite some time to look around my sector and identify uh, potential uh, threats or po potential conflicts that are going to happen. And uh, the, those two aircraft, the Aegean 624 and the Eurowings 2 Papa Lima down here, uh, they are still in Adria space, but they caught my eye because uh, they were flying via Lamsey, a waypoint in Germany, and they were going to merge over uh, Lamsey. They only had one minute difference over that waypoint, and uh, therefore, so this this is uh, one upstream sector where those aircraft are still are, and two sectors downstream is where the actual conflict is happening. But um, when you are able to spot the, uh, this kind of conflict, you're able to help the next sector, the, the sector after that, uh, out very much. So what I did was I uh, called uh, Adria Radar, and uh, I asked him to instruct the GN6-4 to fly a Mach 0 0.80, and Eurowings 2 Papa Lima to fly a Mach 0.77. In hindsight, it's uh, that's a little bit harsh. I could uh, just ask him to give the Aegean Mach 0.79 and Eurowings to Bubble Lima Mach 0.77, as we will see later on. But uh, that I just want to make sure, therefore, the, the high speed for the Aegean. And uh, once those two aircraft are within my sector, Aegean 6 to 4 and Eurowings to Papa Lima, you can already see that they have a uh, uh, projected distance or minimum distance of 16 nautical miles in the north sector, and therefore no further potential uh, infringement in the uh, Munich airspace and here you can see once uh, those two aircraft were leaving for Munich they did not uh, cause any more headaches for the Munich controller he did not have to issue any headings or speeds or something the like um, so it was the, the whole the whole conflict that was going to happen in Munich was the conflicted two sectors substream now to the conclusions from my side regarding speed control to avoid uh, conflict in merging traffic the biggest advantage for speed control and merging traffic is you need very little frequency time. If you execute it properly, you only need one instruction per aircraft. Just think about the rules of thumb uh, on the speeds that I will post later and um, calculate a delta in speed that uh, will achieve the required separation that you need and uh, you're done with just one radio call. No need to send the aircraft on a heading and then adjust the heading and then uh, resume on navigation. One uh, instruction is fine, it saves you a lot of frequency time. Uh, the downside though is, um, especially on VATSIM, speed control needs constant monitoring, especially because um, pilots on VATSIM tend to uh, switch into the menus a lot and um, the simulation rate uh, is, is sometimes an issue. Uh, you need to monitor uh, aircraft merging on the same point with different speeds very closely, especially with a SEP tool. But uh, that's just something that runs in the background. You only have to, to look there uh, every minute or so to make sure that everything is working as you want it to. And uh, yeah, this is the reason why speed control for merging traffic is o often overlooked. You need a lot of pre-planning and early application. The later you apply speed control, they, the, the bigger the delta in speed needs to be. And there, there comes a point when uh, speed control is no longer feasible. So the earlier you use speed control to separate their uh, traffic that are merging on the same point, uh, the better it is for you and for the pilots. that's about it on this video thank you very much for watching i plan to create more educational videos uh, specifically catered to controlling on vatsim if you have any questions put them down in the comments below and if you would like to get notified once i upload more videos please subscribe to the channel and enable the alerts uh, also i would like to invite you to follow me on twitch the link is in the description i will try to answer as many questions uh, as i can and all 
that you might have. Please bear with me uh, for the time while I try to improve my video creation workflow and the production quality. And thank you very much for your early support. Goodbye.